welcome to Mount Zion Baptist Church. At Mount Zion, we are a vibrant and welcoming community committed to worship, fellowship, and service. Our church is located at 777 County Road 9 in Louisville, Alabama. At Mount Zion we are experiencing God through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, discovering and using our God-given talents with the world, preaching the power of Jesus to change lives, building loving relationships and a real loving community, and growing in our spiritual walk with Christ. Our church offers a variety of ministries and programs that cater to people of all ages and backgrounds. From Sunday worship services to Bible studies, youth groups, and outreach initiatives, there are plenty of opportunities for you to get involved and deepen your relationship with Jesus. If you have any specific questions about our church, upcoming events, or how to get connected, visit us online at mountzionfamily.com.
there's that word again, Shaddim. They sacrificed their sons and daughters to false gods. And behind these false gods were demons. I'm so glad that in a country like this that we have today, that we do not sacrifice our babies to false gods anymore. Amen? We do every day. 30 million have been slaughtered in our country for political credits. <coughs> we still do. Now what it is when we expose these gods. Now I believe that we expose certain things that some things get mad. Would you, admit, would you agree with that one? If I were to get Brother Al out here, I don't know him very well. I know he's a good man. He's got a godly wife. He's godly. But if I were to secretly know all the secret sins, and I was to expose every last one of those in front of you today, Brother Al may get mad at me, won't he? Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Same with me also. If I knowingly know you back to your past, and I expose everything to everyone to show them the person you really are, you might get a little mad. Brother Al might try to fight me at the church today. I'm not going to do that by any means. We are going to expose the works of Satan. When I expose the works of Satan, Satan's going to get mad. Because I want you to see how corrupt this devil is that we unfortunately <coughs> serve. And see these false gods are here. So before we get to start the sermon, we're going to pray as we expose, okay? There we go. Okay, here it goes. I found that grace you are. You're above any false god that's out there. You're greater than any demon, and we call upon you, Father, now to protect us. <clears throat> Father, call upon your word to shine through and to show us these false gods that are out here in this world today. False gods we serve. Lord, we hope to expose them this morning that we won't serve them. But we'll look past them and look only to you, the one true God, our Yahweh God, the only God there is. Oh, we thank you so much that you sent your son Jesus as the fleshly form of you, of God himself. Of God, you sent your son to die for us. And Father, thank you so much for his protection. And your protection, Father, that covers us. Your Holy Spirit protects us, Father. As we expose these demons this morning, please help us. In Christ's name, amen. I often get told this a whole lot. Um... I mean, you know, my, my secret past is my secret past. Uh, one of my things I love doing in my spare time, don't laugh, is reading. I don't know what it is, but Jessica makes fun of me. And Jessica, in this past week, we had tons and tons of books. For those who don't know, we have did a good church book coming out about the history of the church. Put it together a couple weeks ago. Finally got delivered this past week. So there's 200 books that came to the house this past week. Not to mention, I'm a huge fan of this website called thriftbooks.com. And thriftbooks, you can simply buy all these used books for like pennies on a dollar. I mean, you can get every 10 books you buy, you get a free one. So for $10, you can have 40 books. And this past week, every single day my mom called me and says, UPS came again to bring some more books. And I have a book now that is this, this, this stack this high. Slam on history books. And Jesse says, why do you care about that so much? Hmm? I just do. So I'm going to describe you some history this morning. And all the things I've learned this past week. Try to help for this sermon. About these kind of false gods to help us kind of understand where they come from. In the Bible, there's one chief false god. You probably heard his name. Throughout all the Old Testament, that name is Baal, B-A-A-L. You ever hear that name in the Bible? Old Testament? They serve Baals. That's, literally, that's uh, Baal is what they're called. So that's what they were called by the Bible. They serve these false gods. They left Yahweh God and began to serve these Baals. Now, here's what a Baal was. I told you last week what the definition of a Baal is. The definition is a leader, the husband, the father, and the shepherd. So they're leaving God the Father, God the Good Shepherd, God the Great Shepherd, God the Leader. And they're following after a false God called Baal that is also described as a father, husband, shepherd. Sound not identical? Does not, the does not the devil pose as an angel of light? Everything that God creates, Satan now duplicates the Creator's own. We have the great Christ. The Bible says one day there will be an Antichrist. If there's always, and he come 
comes claiming to be a Messiah. Well, empires rose and empires fell. What happened to Baal? Did Baal just cease to be? Not by any means. Soon before you know it, empires rose and fell and the Greeks rose to power. The Romans rose to power and they had many, many, many gods. But their chief god was one called Zeus. You heard that name? If you study mythological stuff, right? So Zeus. Here's what the historian says, Eubestus, says about Zeus. Okay. Anyway, they, being the Romans, the Greeks, regarded as the God of the heaven, the Lord of heaven, calling him Belsimon, which is Baal, which is the Phoenician language, Lord of heaven. In the Greek, what's his name? So where did Baal go? Baal just got a brand new name. So they would refer to him as Baal. Like, for instance, our name for God is God. We call him God, right? Do the Spanish-speaking people call him God? No, it's Dios, which means God to them. Same God, but they have a different name for God than we do. Just a translation. Like, for instance, we say Jesus. Ask him when he receives Jesus, they don't have a clue. They call him Yeshua. That's his name he receives. Like the name Joshua. That's what Jesus is called. So they served in Greek languages. They served Zeus for Apollos. They all followed so far. So Baal hadn't changed. Baal's still around. And Zeus, Baal, had many sons and daughters, according to Greek mythology. And one of these sons is named Apollos. You ever heard the word Apollos? You mentioned the Bible too. And here's the way Apollos came to fame. Here's how he got his he has already got his elevated godhood status <laughs> in mythology. He goes and kills a gigantic python. Sounds cool, don't it? He's like a crocodile hunter all over, right? He supposedly kills this gigantic python, <laughs> and he takes the name of the python for himself and says, from this day forward, I should be known as Pythion Apollo. And that's what he said and set up a temple for him to be worshipped. <coughs> and in this temple, he brought these slave girls described as oracles. And he would speak, even after he passed away supposedly, he would still speak through these oracles. These young virgins would go into trance-like states, and they would be embodied or possessed by the spirit of Pythion. You ever heard that version before? That's in your Bibles. And they would be in, possessed by the spirit of Pythion or Pythion. And they would speak to the people for the gods. <coughs> now turn to Acts chapter number 16. You're going to see this God raising up. This God's in the Bible. This false God. Little G. So a child of Zeus, child of Baal, it's found here. Acts chapter number 16. It's about Paul and Silas. They're on a missionary journey. They go to Philippi. There they go to the creek. They're at the river. There's nobody, and there's not enough men in this town to have a, a church service or synagogue service. So they go down to the river and find some ladies down at the river. They begin to share the message of Jesus Christ with them. The Bible says a woman named Lydia, who was a, a seller of purple garments, she and her whole family accepts the message of Jesus Christ, and she gets saved. Praise God because Lydia gets saved. But immediately after that happened, in verses number 18, and it happened that as they were going to the place of prayer, a slave woman, that word in the Greek is oracle, who had the spirit of divination, if you get your concordance and break it open, you say the word divination is pithion. Now it's breaking up a little further. It says that so as Paul and Silas are going to the house of prayer, this little oracle who has the spirit of Pythion or the spirit of Apollo. 
Apollos, then she speaks supposedly for this false god, comes up and says, who was bringing great profit to her masters by fortune telling. She followed Paul and us and cried out repeatedly, saying, These men are bond servants of the God Most High who are proclaiming you a way of salvation. Now she continued to do this for many days. But Paul was greatly annoyed. And he turned and said to the what? He did not speak to the oracle. He spoke to that thing that has possessed her. Because she's possessed by something. Here's Apollos being a god. What's behind gods? Little G's? Demons. And Paul spoke directly to that evil spirit within her and said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. What did he just do? He expelled a demon. You know what Jesus did it too? In my name, get out. You know what Christ did it? There was no lectures, no, no weird things that the Catholic Church does. It was simply the name of Jesus get out. It all says, and it came out of her that very moment. You believe that's true? It's in your Bible. That literally Paul cast out a demon that was put inside of her by Apollos, who was also a false god who served under Zeus, who is also known as Baal. <laughs> from the very beginning. <coughs> and the story doesn't stop there. I'll show this person here. That's a picture of Paulus, by the way. I'll show this guy here. His name is Diocletian. You ever heard this guy? Don't worry, I'm the only history idiot in the world. I don't know who this guy is. Here it happened. He rose to power about 280 or so AD, <coughs> after Christ, of course. And he wants to bring peace to Rome. And in about 300 AD, he goes to the temple of Apollos. He goes to the oracle and he inquires of the oracle what can be done to bring peace to Rome. And the little oracle girl goes into trance like state and speaks for the God and says, you need to go and make war against all Christians and to wipe them off the face of the earth. Read back in history. That was called the great persecution of the church. About 303 is when it started and lasted about four years. Christians were arrested. And that time tells us that so many Christians were arrested for their faith in Jesus. They were letting murderers and rapists go to make room in the jails for Christians. Christians was outlawed in Rome. <clears throat> Christians were brought before all this mass population and told them they must recant of their faith or be killed. So confess Jesus is not real or be killed. Would you do it? God, just kill me, right? So they were fed to lions. They were crucified. They were beheaded. They were torched alive. And the favorite way of doing it was throw them into arenas and let them be mauled by the lions for entertainment for the spectators. That's what would have been, back in the 300s, would have been animal food for simply being a Christian. <coughs> but guess what? The Bible does not lie. God doesn't lie. Because he said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Even though the church was being persecuted right and left, the church was still growing. <laughs> And finally, to prove the fact the church could not grow, Diocletian finally died off. And another man took his position. His name was, his picture, Constantine. You ever heard this man? He now made Christianity the official religion of all of Rome. And declared that all these bales and all these false temples and all of these things that the Greeks and the Romans all these false gods temples must be torn down as the emperor says make it so and they tore down every single false gods 
serving a false god was now illegal. If you did this, you were now the one that got locked up and thrown in jail. Pretty neat. Because Christianity prevailed. He began building the churches. Him and his mother, Helen, started building churches all over Rome, all over Jerusalem, all over the known world at that time, all for one purpose, to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's my question for all of us. Where did all those demons go? All those demons who've been worshipped, all those worship <coughs> houses, all those false gods who are being worshipped, where did they go? They're eternal, are they? They're spirit like us. Inside of us, they're eternal. So where did they go? They changed their appearance. And they're back. And here's where these gods now are. Last we saw one of these gods, we would call it the Isle of <coughs> Image. Now today we're looking at one that could think of a better name other than simply the Isle of Influence. I want to say the Isle of Intoxication, but it's about the same thing. It means influence means there's something outside that is affecting you. Something that is controlling you, something that influences you. Now, this is also turned also to the book of Acts chapter 14. So let's turn back one page. Now look who this God of influence actually is. <coughs> chapter 14 of Acts. Paul and Barnabas are preaching. It says in verses 8, And in Lystra... A certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. This man heard Paul speak. <clears throat> Paul, observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet. And he leaped up and walked. This is in our Bibles, right? And that's true. Now, when the people saw what Paul had done, they raised their voices, saying, in the Lacotian language, the gods, little g, have come down to us in the likeness of men. And Barnabas they called what? Zeus. And Paul they called Hermes. Because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Zeus, whose temple was in front of their city, brought oxen and gardens to the gates, intending to sacrifice with a multitude. So here's Paul preaching. Hermes is the mouthpiece of Zeus. He speaks for the gods. So Hermes is speaking, Paul, they call him. And immediately they come to say that you are Zeus and you're Apollo, you're Hermes. And they begin to bring all these animals to sacrifice these false gods who were not false gods, which is Peter and Barnabas preached the message of Jesus. They misunderstood the message. Well, all of a sudden the Jews heard that Paul and Barnabas were being called gods. And they <laughs> run in. Read the rest of the chapter and you'll see that the Jews ran in and saw Paul and Barnabas and began to stone them and left Paul their stone because they thought he was dead from being stoned because people claimed him to be a God. Now, who is Hermes? Hermes is back, and here's who he is. Hermes was the messenger of God. He brought the message of a leader that says, listen to what I'm saying. My way is right. If you follow me, nothing will ever happen to you. I'm the way. I'm fixing to bring change. I can do this. So they're following after a leader. I'm going to ask the question, <laughs> are people in this country following after a leader right now? Who is supposed to be our leader? Our king. Not a president. Not a politician. But a king. But what's more important is the influence. Also, this guy, John Hermes, was Hermes was to put you into a trance-like state. Listen very carefully. Put you in a trance-like state. And then once you go into unconsciousness, the god Hermes, I'm using the word little G's, was to escort.
short shoe to the nail. Pretty neat, huh? That's the job. Also in Hermes' hand, let me see a picture up here. You do. He held a staff in his hand. This staff was a golden rod with feathers at the very top, and also had two snakes surrounding this thing. Is this image anywhere? Did somebody say that again? My goodness, you mean to tell me that Hermes is back? The very cult of Hermes is back. And it's written all over every single pharmacy and medical profession there is. And I'm going to stop here. I'm going to go on some more. The greatest problem in America right now is the influence. Influence of what? Influence of drugs is the greatest thing right now. Worst breakdown of our culture. We are a nation that serves drugs. You don't believe me? Out of the law, just changed our law for drug use. Some states don't even arrest anymore. Give them some issue citations of drugs. We had to make a whole new Alabama, a whole new law called a Class D felony for drug use. So you won't serve any time in jail because of it. You don't believe we take drugs lightly? Ask more. How many right now are on drugs? <laughs> Let's be honest. I don't have a pill at home right now to take. From a pharmacy. That's called a pharmaceutical, which that is the name in the Greek language for sorcery. Let's just be honest. If it was a drug in a pill form, a drug in a drink form, a drug in a, a gallon jug at your home, all these were poisons that are taken into the body that simply affect the way that influences our behavior, influences our culture. Where does 99% of all crimes take place? They take place because people are trying to buy drugs or own drugs. <clears throat> Where do most wrecks happen? People are doing drugs or trying to get the place to drugs. Drunk driving. We are a nation that is obsessed by this God called Hermes. Not to mention our, what's her name? Secretary of Health. Next picture. She is our Secretary of Health. Let me phrase that. He is our Secretary of Health. That is a man that dresses like a woman, that can't define what a woman even is, even though it thinks it is one, and that's in charge of the pharmaceutica in America. And we think nothing's going on. Satan <coughs> is awesome at disguising himself <coughs> as something good. Let's put this evil person off the screen. There's another I to look at called the Isle of Infatuation. The Isle of Infatuation. Who is this God? In the Greek and Roman culture, they had one God who they worshipped just as much as they did Zeus. This God's name was Aphrodite. You remember that name? I cannot show you a picture of Aphrodite because every single picture of Aphrodite, every statue of Aphrodite is a naked woman with everything exposed. So I want to put that up there. You're welcome. That was it. She is the god of sex, the god of fertility, the god of fornication, the god of lust, and she is the god of adultery. She's also the god who is in love with violence. Now prove that, preacher. Well, see, in the Greek culture, Aphrodite was married to another god. But Aphrodite did not like her husband because her husband was ugly. <laughs> what do you know? That's really what happened. She had an ugly husband. Like little Jeffrey over there. He had an ugly husband. Just kidding. Just kidding, brother Jeffrey. <laughs> had an ugly husband. So, behind her husband's back, she went out and had adultery with many other gods. But her favorite god to have adultery with was a god by the name of Ares. You know what Ares is? Ares is the god of violence. So she was in love with violence. Now watch what three gods now we have in charge of our world. And tell me if I'm not lying. Sex, drugs, what's the last one? Violence. They're all back. Sex, drugs, and violence. Let me prove it to you. I'm going to show you a picture. I'm going to 
I'm going to show you any kind of lyrics. I'm going to show you pictures. I'm not going to call her name as that dude. This person here. You ever notice who she is? Some of y'all are like, yeah, I listen to her music every day. I always have. <laughs> she has a song. And the song is simply called Threats. And this song, she is, walk on and please watch her blinders on. I advise you to watch it, you honestly. Know, just listen to my words about it. In this video, she is completely naked. And she's walking around in this video. Nothing is blurred out. Everything is for any child to go on YouTube and to see. She can log on YouTube and watch this woman parade around the nude. She is dancing other nude women. And in the whole process of the song, is called Press. And by press, it means press that trigger. And she murders everybody that's around her. And dead, naked people are all around her feet. And she is singing the song. That's not all. She is so famous, next picture, that even our president sat down with her to discuss how corrupt police officers are in America and police brutality. Sat down with her and sing a song naked about mass murdering people, and that's fine, and we still buy her music. I don't. Not only mention this, but she is now so famous that only she to set down the president, a great corporation that's shaped like an eon. You know what that letter is? This one. McDonald's named a meal after her. The Cardi B meal, y'all. <laughs> You're that famous who promotes all these addresses so scandally and a naked Hopper videos. Sings about violence, and we applaud her in this society. We are serving the gods of sex and violence. I'm not done. This poor old lady, she sang the halftime last year in the Super Bowl. You can't get much better than a half Super Bowl halftime performance. In the halftime performance, her posse around her are dressed as demons with little small little horns sticking out of their head. She is dressed as a demon herself. She sings a song. I can't just say the words to it, but it basically says, bad word, better have my money. Y'all laugh, there's no song. And in this video, she is also naked, and she abducts a naked white female, hangs this naked white female by her feet, and is torturing her in the video. At the end of the video, she then kills this woman and covers herself in this naked woman's blood. Here's a picture of her. And we love this stuff. And our kids listen to this stuff. Our society is bombarded with this stuff. She is her baby daddy. Her baby daddy sings songs are only about that it's perfectly fine to kill police officers. Sex, drugs, and violence and the plot. Another woman named Billie Eilish. So you probably heard of her. All the little kids love her right now. She's their role model. What a great woman Billie Eilish is. We love her music. Billie Eilish sings a song that says, All good girls go to hell. This is the background of her video. That's her posing as a demon that fell out of the sky. And we praise her and put her on the Grammys. Presidents have called her and talked to her. I just bought music, y'all. Right now, there's video games out. About every last one includes mass violence. I just found this out this past week of how bad this one actually is. There's a video game out right now. It's one you've probably heard of. And all of our teachers, raise your hand. Let's go with you, y'all. There's a video game out now that literally in this game, there it is. These two, remember when Columbine took place in 1999? 
These two school shooters went to Columbine and committed a mass murder inside the school. In this video game now, you can wear their clothes and commit your own school shooting in a video game. And when the first day this video game came out, the first day made $800 million. And we don't serve sex, drugs, and violence. In our TV shows today, what does every TV show have on it? And what are we being desensitized to? It's no big deal. It's everywhere. Yeah, because evil is everywhere. Go ahead, Liz, right here. <coughs> if I was to today give you a pet rattlesnake to take home with you, <coughs> How many of you would willingly accept that? Nobody. How many would willingly accept that thing and bring it home and put it on top of your television in your living room? Nobody. How many bring that snake into your bedroom and let it sleep with you at night? Or let it live on top of your computer screen? Then why would you allow this evilness to do the same thing? <coughs> do nothing but poisonous. These demons are back. It's time to wake up and realize Flee from these things because we are now a nation that's turning away from God and turning back to these false demons yet again. And God says when we do that kind of things, what we do to us, we anger Him. Time is upon us. Let's pray.